Hi everybody, my name is Adora Svitok and today we're going to be discussing how to outline a story in under five minutes. If you have any ideas as to what I should be doing in five minutes next, please comment below. I look forward to your suggestions. So today's is outlining a story in under five five minutes. Let's see if we can do it. The clock is ticking right now. My clock shows 5.37 p.m. So I'm going to hurry up and do this. So the first thing that you might want to start thinking about are your characters. The characters are the people or animals in your story. Uh, if you think about Harry Potter, the main character is Harry Potter. The supporting characters are Hermione, Ron, many other people. The antagonist is, of course, the evil Lord Voldemort. So there you have um, some of the essential characters in Harry Potter. Now, of course, depending on the length of your story, you may have lots and lots of supporting characters. So if you think about Harry Potter, you have Luna Lovegood, you have Neville Longbottom, you have all these um, humongous lists of characters. Or you might have way fewer characters. Um, take The Hunger Games, for instance. Shorter books, fewer supporting characters, fewer characters overall. So number of characters is kind of dependent on length of book. So as you're creating your numbers of characters, start thinking about, well, how long do I want it to be and how much commitment do I want to developing each character? Make sure that not too many of your characters are what are called flat characters. Flat characters are characters who fit into stereotypes easily. The dumb jock, the mean cheerleader, um, just use you know the school sports examples, um, the strict grumpy old teacher. These are ones who you can identify with just a point of your finger and who you see reappearing in book after book. They become trite or very cliche because they've been used so much. So really avoid flat characters that can be very cliche, very underdeveloped, and instead go for round. Um, I know that's a bad circle right there. But round characters are people who really seem to live and breathe with the words that you've written on the page. It gives them life. Round characters have not just strengths, they're not perfect, they're not goody two-shoes, they have strengths and weaknesses. So for instance, the intelligent bookworm could be a secret arsonist. You know, these are unique characters who have secrets, who have things they're good at, things they're not so good at. In order to create round characters, try practicing analyzing some of your friends, yourself, and think what are strengths and what are weaknesses. And then take those and um, make them your character traits. So uh, character traits could be things like uh, smart, funny, intelligent, well that's actually just sort of the same as smart so I'm going in circles here. But then think of some weaknesses, so maybe selfish. Perhaps You probably know someone who could be smart, but is also a little bit on the selfish side. You might know someone who's funny, but also uh, kind of cruel. Actually, probably a lot of cruel in one way or another. So people can be um, great people in some ways and not so great in others. And that's essential to creating these round characters, well-developed characters. So, um, for, remember I was supposed to be outlining the story in five minutes, so that was a little explanation of characters. So for my first character, uh, I'm going to call her, let's think here, um, Melinda um, Jarsitis. Okay, that kind of sounds like a bad disease, but Melinda Jarsitis, and I'm going to give her an age. She is a 51-year-old woman. Um, I'm going to make this font a little smaller, so don't count the five minutes against me here. 51-year-old woman who uh, lives with ten cats and uh, has, a, has a secret love of um, breaking into, breaking into, let me think, um, grocery stores at night. Kind of strange stuff here, but this just makes for a maybe interesting plot revolving around the cats and the grocery stores. Who knows what could happen there. And um, if I wanted to add some character traits, I could um, do, for instance, going to create the annotations. And let's say that uh, strengths of Melinda loves animals. Well, that's kind of obvious. 
But you notice how I don't want to turn her into the normal flat cat lady. You know, every that would be sort of a flat character, the cat lady who lives with cats, and, you know, that's all. I want to give her more dimension than that. So, loves animals, um, maybe was... Hmm, actually, I'm trying, I'm now thinking about her life. That's sort of a mistake. Oops, forgive the... Um, okay, loves animals, other strengths, um, strong, and cunning, which indicates a little bit of something dangerous, maybe. Think of, like, Slytherin, cunning, or sly. Weaknesses, uh, shady ethics. As you can see, really, from the kind of secret love of breaking into grocery stores, that's not very ethical, is it? Not it doesn't have a good sense of right or wrong. So, as you can see from my crappy handwriting, Melinda Jarositis, 51-year-old woman who lives with 10 cats, has a secret love of breaking into grocery stores at night, loves animals, a uh, very strong woman, cunning, weakness, has shady ethics. So there we go, just some initial thoughts about this character. Setting. Uh, let's say that the setting is in uh, rural eastern Washington. Okay. So, uh, area I haven't been to too many times, once or twice. Uh, let's say um, outside Pullman. So, for anyone who's actually from Washington, you'll know Pullman is um, sort of a university town. Washington State University is there. Uh, Eastern Washington, 70 miles south of Spokane. Okay, but that's a bit on a tangent. So, what do we know from the setting? Well, we know that she's a little bit isolated because of the rural... Uh, how does, or you ask yourself, how does the setting affect the character? Well, the fact that the setting is this rural area, eastern Washington, outside Pullman, means that Melinda Jarsitis maybe likes being alone, that's a possibility, so, or it could also be that she's lonely and, um, you know, doesn't really have any draw to a major city, aside from waking into grocery stores, of course, so there we have our setting, you might want to think about that. And moving on to plot, what happens in the story is what plot is. And asking yourself that, you don't want to just do one, two, three. You also want to think on a broader level about what happens in the plot. How does it affect the character? How does the character change over the course of the story? And why is character change so important? Well, think of your favorite books. Do characters stay exactly the same at the beginning as they do at the end? No, they change over time. They gain wisdom. They gain insight. Um, Harry Potter, you know, sees all these people dying and uh, becomes more wise, becomes more insightful and stuff. People change over time, and so characters do. That's reflected in books. So you, when you think about the plot, you might want to ask yourself, how does my character change over time? And if you need a help, um, some help with that, then just ask yourself, how have I changed over time? And if you think, well, it's not very dramatic, then just ask yourself, well, consider how I was when I was, um, let's say if you're a grown-up, how I was when I was 10 compared to how I am now at 30. Or if you're a teenager, how I was at 5 to 15. You know that you've changed a lot, and it's not just gaining vocabulary, it's not just different friends and maybe um, different home or whatever, it's uh, your characteristics. You may value things now that you didn't so much then. So let's say that Melinda Jarsitis changes... Um, Hmm, it's actually kind of challenging. Well, you know what, actually I'm going to start with a conflict. If you're a little bit stuck as to how your character changes over time, as I am right now, uh, then you can move on to the conflict. So maybe the main conflict here is that, um, okay, Melinda gets caught. I'm going to start typing, actually. As you can tell, I'm not so great at doing the digital writing. Oops. Gets caught breaking into a grocery store and has to make as to whether um, either, hmm, okay, so she's caught breaking into a grocery store and has to make a decision, either sell her home in order to the, the humongous fine. and give up her cats, her beloved cats, in order to pay the humongous fine, or go to jail. Hmm. 
Okay, so kind of interesting conflict, I hope you think. Now remember, I'm doing this in very short order, so if you were writing an actual novel, then sure, you can sit and you can ponder a little bit, but hopefully the point of this whole doing outlining a story in five minutes is showing that really, when it comes down to a character's setting and plot are not as hard as, you know, isolating yourself in a dark room and pacing back and forth and all the stereotypical ideas that you might have about writers, it can come down to simply thinking, who are my characters, what is my setting, what is my plot? Now you don't have to do it in this sort of order, you don't have to start with a character, you, don't have to, you could start with a setting. You could say, I really like the idea of writing a story about outer space or in outer space, and who knows, maybe you can come up with the next Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You could start with plot. I really want to write a story um, about how a new invention is changing society. And actually that's what I'm doing for my National Novel Writing Month novel. It's all about how this customization machine is um, and, and what beauty really means. You can see a better synopsis uh, on my page on NaNoWriMo. But the point is, is that you can start with any of one of these or all of three at the same time if you feel so inclined. Start brainstorming and come up with a story outline in, I'm hoping, less than five minutes. Thanks a bunch for watching, hope this was helpful, and be sure to give me more ideas on what I should do next in five minutes, or a little more than five minutes, with comments. Thanks!